welcome to the 2022 Merchant Payments Ecosystem video interview series. Today's topic is Buy Now, Pay Later, or BNPL for short. My name is Eric Howell. I'm a partner with Flagship Advisory Partners. I'm joined by Nina Putz, CEO of RatePay, a major European BNPL provider, and Thomas Ficht, head of payment at MyToys, a major uh, European e-commerce retailer. So just to set the stage, uh, to date, BNPL has grown rapidly, but there are many providers in the market currently consolidating via mergers and acquisitions, and the industry arguably faces some headwinds, additional regulation, public relations scrutiny, and some questions regarding the underlying profitability of the business model. Proponents point to strong growth in BNPL continuing due to generational shifts and consumer preferences, strong synergies with e-commerce, and excellent user experience. The tractors, on the other hand, point to BNPL as a bubble waiting to burst due to it being, in their view, a reskin credit card, somewhat bypasses consumer credit regulations, and the underlying profitability model, as I mentioned before, is a bit challenging. So therefore, I'd like to ask Nina and Thomas, probably Nina first, what is your outlook for the future of BNPL in Europe? Is it uh, the future of short-term credit, or is BNPL in a bubble that's waiting to burst, and why? So. Buy now, pay later has a very strong impact. And the unprecedented times caused by the COVID-19 pandemic led to super explosive growth of buy now, pay later at a time actually when many people were experiencing financial uncertainty and needed an easily accessible form of credit. Just a few stats. So around 30% of consumers won't even complete a payment if buy now, pay later is not available. So it's from my point of view, really becoming the standard form of payment rather than being a bubble. And you might ask yourself, what's in for merchants? Firstly, it brings in new customers who otherwise would not have made a purchase at all. Three quarters of those second chance customers. So those who don't want to or may not be able to take on additional debt, such as younger shoppers, for example, indicate that by now Peleta would let them make more purchases than they otherwise could. Secondly, it um, increases the order value. And according to a study by Bain and Company, average order value goes up by 20 to 30%. And finally, the frequency of purchases increases by about 10 to 15% on average. I would also like to share a really great example of how Buy Now Pay Later drives additional value for merchants in Germany, in the country where I come from, and where payment by invoice is by far the most relevant Buy Now Pay Later method, with approximately 30% share of all checkouts in e-commerce. And this is actually very different from the typical pay in four installments approach that you see with UK, Australian, or US players. Due date of invoice payments is deferred to 14 or 30 days after the purchase is made. And consumers, in this case, do not have to insert any financial data online. And therefore, lack of trust in unknown online shops is not an issue at all, because the goods only have to be paid once they have been received. And in the, the case of consumer actually having to return a good, they only need to pay for what they actually decide to keep. And therefore, the checkout conversion rates usually see a massive increase when this buy now, pay later option is available. Mm. Also, in terms of, of numbers showing you how big this whole thing is, is there's a new report by Grandview Research, and that shows that buy now, pay later is the future. And um, the global market size is expected to reach more than $39 billion by 2030, billion, 39.4 to be frank. And this means a CAGA from 2022 to 2030 by 26%. And summarizing the whole great thing about buy now, pay later, it um, enabled really significant strides towards financial inclusion and the impact cannot be underestimated. Yes, what many people say, regulation will curb overspending as a stronger credit risk and affordability uh, checks are implemented, but 
consumers will continue to use buy now pay later because of the convenience it actually provides regulation is also from my point of view not going to happen overnight um, the industry will need time to implement compliance requirements and technology changes therefore at least here in in this part of europe my suggestion or belief is that it will be at least three more years until you will see significant uplift there. What's clear though, is that um, by now pay later, innovation is continuing apace across industries. And this will expand even to trading and cryptocurrency platforms. This will be new, the next evolvement. And there must be the right technology to power these innovations and the appropriate regulatory oversight to protect consumers. Interesting. Very interesting, especially the point about cryptocurrency. So let's see how many uh, years Thomas, that will take, but it'll be soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, from the merchant view, what, what's your outlook for the future of BNPL in Europe? Um, I, in my eyes, it highly depends on the market. We have a couple of very mature markets, uh, the German speaking countries, uh, Austria, Switzerland and Germany. Um, they have a buy now, pay later history, as Nina already mentioned, mostly open invoice of more than 100 years. Um, in, in Germany, e-commerce has evolved from catalog players. They used to send out catalogs and they used to pay via open invoice. Um, and a couple of auto companies, they have started 100 years ago. So that's a very, very traditional payment method here in Germany. And used, it used to be um, a payment method for the more mature people. And um, like some five, five years ago, people would have said, okay, now the younger people, they, um, they use uh, PayPal and newer payment method, but that in the, in the very recent past that has sh uh, changed quite a bit with some BNPL providers uh, going massively into branding efforts and into, uh, into B2C campaigns. Um, but it's not only the German speaking um, region, but it's also Scandinavia. Scandinavia, um, where one of the big players comes from, is, um, is, a, is a, has a tradition of buy now, pay later as well. And some of the Benelux countries, they also know what open invoice or other payment methods are. So in these countries, it's not, it's definitely not a bubble. It's, it has been around for quite some time and it has reached a checkout share of 50 plus percent uh, up to 90 percent in, in certain online shops. So uh, it is something which has been around. And um, yes, um, there is there are other markets where, where it's uh, extremely or rather new, um, such as the UK and people people just have to get used to it. And um, with, um, with other more mature countries, um, people are already used to it. And with, um, with social media where people brag about their debt, et cetera, um, regulators, obviously, as you mentioned before, Eric, regular, uh, regulators come into play and they say, okay, we have to con um, protect the consumers. There are certain by now pay later providers who are starting to educate their their own consumers these days um, because they say, OK, for every young customer, I think I've received the message just today. They um, have an obligatory video on indebtedness for every consumer, which is a very new way of um, of uh, approaching approaching customers by by telling them what can happen. Um, but in my eyes, that's due to the fact that regulators, as I already mentioned, come on to play and self-regulation is usually better than being regulated from somebody else. And um, in the eyes of that, we have seen regulation in the past. We have seen caps on fees. We have seen caps on, on revolving credit uh, facilities. We have seen um, caps on dunning fees on um, the, the uh, debt collection industry is currently under uh, supervision or not under supervision, but regulators are checking that. And um, so I think it's, it's really about how are regulators um, looking into, into the sphere. And for it has worked in the German speaking countries, but with the EU making the regulation in, in those cases, we will see how, how the more mature countries are valued in, in terms of, uh, and perspective to the other, 
to the other um, geographies such as Sp bigger, bigger geographies such as Spain, France or Italy, where by now pay later is still rather new. Um, you also asked if it was a uh, if it's a bubble. In my eyes, the biggest bubble is the valuation of companies. I'm not sure why companies are uh, valued at multiple um, billions um, for having only a handful of customers. Um, we've seen that with a couple of companies in the past. It is a very, it is a very tight market. Uh, refinancing is an issue with interest rates rising. Uh, the market may change uh, quite a lot, but um, I, I'm, I don't see that the payment method itself, uh, the payment me method itself, it's very customer centric. It is what people want and people will start to want more in other geographies for certain um, products that are sold, uh, especially in fashion, you have a high return rate and it does make sense not to have to pay everything that you will eventually not keep because you're sending back half of the goods that you um, that you purchase or that you ha have been delivered. And um, so I, I don't see any major changes in the, in the mature markets, but um, maybe there is regulation coming up, which is not really, um, which might not be necessary in those mature markets, but um, it, it covers them as well as it's going to be um, European Union legislation or the UK. Um, they may, um, they may go, go through a different path because they are, they're a different uh, legislation, obviously. And yeah, so that's pretty much what I, what I see. Um, but in general, by now, pay later is customer centric and the entire industry is about being customer centric. And that's why I think it's here to stay and it will stay and it will evolve in other geographies and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Great. Well, thank you very much. Excellent on the ground commentary. I think, you know, particularly very good points around the long history of uh, open invoice, uh, even going back 100 years with catalogers and the Nordics, uh, Germanic markets. Definitely true. Uh, I think good perspective on regulation, you know, it probably is coming. But to Nina's point, it will definitely take a while to Thomas's point, you know, that some a bit of regulation is a good thing. Uh, also, excellent points by Thomas on the valuations. You know, certainly, I think that the trend in valuations is a is a, a feature of the entire fintech market, uh, not just by now, uh, pay later. And also, uh, particularly interesting to me, some very good a very good point from Nina on the future of by now pay later use cases, uh, expanding into new areas such as uh, crypto uh, cryptocurrency. So great, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to speak to us today, and for the audience, thank you for taking the time to watch. Um, we all, we look forward to seeing all of you at MPE in Berlin in July. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.